Is it the powder? Dude, I don't know what, something smells like celery. I smell celery. <laughs> Is this what it's like to have a stroke? I smell toast. Seriously though, I smell celery. It's, it's starting to really bother me. And hello beautiful people, welcome back. I hope you guys are all having an amazing day today and I hope that you're ready because today we're taking a ride on the good old Internet Express and we are diving into Glamour.com's beauty awards that they just posted, I wanna say maybe Friday or like last week sometime, it was just recently. And they put out their top makeup, they put out, you know, top skincare, hair care, um, perfume, all of that. But I thought it would be cool for today's video to sit down and do a full face of these favorites. Um, I did go through and pull a few items kind of from each list, the high end, the drugstore and just kind of mashed them together based on what I had. There is only, I want to say, one or two products that I didn't have, which I am substituting those out. Um, the rest of them, I agree a little. A lot of them I don't. And a lot of these products I also haven't used in a very long time, but I used to like them or I used to hate them. So it'll be cool to get to just like pull out everything. It's almost like a shop my stash, but based on somebody else's list. And I'm really intrigued to play around with these and see if we can figure out, you know, what made, how did they make the list? Are they actually that good? Are they still as bad as I remember. You guys know the drill. So let's go ahead and scoot the camera in and get started. All right, so we are good. We're zoomed. I'm using my glasses as a headband and um, I'm also having hot flashes that could rival the surface of the sun. So super fun. Now going in first with primer, they did have two different primers, obviously one drugstore, one high end. Um, I didn't have either of them. One was from Neutrogena and the other one was from the Victoria Beckham line. And I, not only did I not have either of them, I had no interest in picking up either of them. So I'm just going to go ahead and prime with my Tatcha really quickly and uh, then we can kind of scoot along. For foundation, I would have to say that Glamour.com picked two foundations that not only would I say are not the best of the year or deserve any award, I would dare say that they picked the two most uh, foundations. Like they're not awful, but they're also not anywhere near good, like especially when you look at all of the foundations that have launched. But uh, that's neither here nor there at this point because I am going in uh, not with the drugstore one, which was the, I believe, Revlon Candid Foundation. Oh no, I'm not going in with that one. <laughs> I'm going in with the Pat McGrath Foundation, their Sublime Fetish Foundation. I will be using this in the shade Light 5. Joy. Now, if you're relatively new to my channel, this is one of those that I did try uh, when it first released. I tried it several times. I did a first impression. I believe I even did an update. And no matter what I did with this foundation, I could not make it work for me. So I'm just going to apply it here. This is a Fenty sponge. And uh, we're going to work this all over the face and see if we can make it look all right. All right, so I'm gonna leave this here. I'm not gonna try to build up any more coverage. As of right now, I'd say we're at about a medium. All of my darker, like more red and pigmented areas, those are still showing, but the lighter pigmented areas are covered and everything looks pretty good and blended. So let's go ahead and talk about concealer. They had on the high-end side, the Dior concealer, but on the drugstore side, they had one that I do think is good and I do agree with, and that is the CoverGirl concealer. This is their True Blend Undercover Concealer and I have it in the shade L100 Fair. And this is a concealer that I was actually a pretty big fan of there for a few months. This is actually my, I want to say my second bottle of it, if memory serves, because I know I've repurchased it at least once, if not twice. And the consistency, the blend, everything on this is so easy to work with. Okay, so who knows that song? Um, Africa by Toto, the, I hope it rains on Africa. It's raining outside right now, and that's all I can hear in my head. Like that's that's all I'm singing in repeat on my head in my head. It's so annoying. So next up, I'm going to go ahead and set the under eye and through the T zone, and I'm doing that with the Laura Mercier powder the cult classic, I should say, Laura Mercier powder. And uh, I th this one was kind of a shock to me because on the high end side, I, I feel like Laura Mercier, yes, it's still a good powder and like people still use it, love it, swear by it and everything. But I also think that there have been a ton of other powders that have come out on the high end side that people absolutely love as well. Like the one from Hourglass, the one from Charlotte Tilbury, like there have been other really, really awesome powders that have come out. Hell, even the one from Fenty, a lot of people love that. So I was a little bit shocked, honestly, when I saw that this one was still on the list because I could understand, you know, if this was like a year or two ago, this was the powder everybody went for. But I don't know. This this one just kind of threw me off a little bit. Also, I could just be really partial to, <laughs> to the ones from Hourglass and Charlotte Tilbury. I don't know. Now, another item that they did recommend, which I'm going to use to set the rest of the face, is from Marc Jacobs. And this is their Accomplice Instant Blurring Powder. I have this in the shade 50, which for me, this shade is too dark, which is why I've already went ahead and set my face. But I figured I would use it um, and just very lightly kind of dust it over the perimeters of my face. This is my Scott Barnes 67. 
and I'm gonna use it like it's, oh wow, <laughs> wow. Yeah, this is way too deep of a shade for me. And this powder is really nice. It does have a slight light kind of blurring effect over your pores and like more textured areas. Again, is it something that I would say like, wow, this is my top pick, you know, pressed powder high end? No, uh, but it is it is a nice powder. Like I, I can at least kind of see why they would pick this one because it is really pretty. But in my opinion, is it a top pick? Mm, not really, just my opinion. All right, so I totally just screwed up, my fault. Um, I went ahead and I powdered my entire face and they did have a cream bronzer on here that I wanted to use and I even pulled it. It was sitting right over here. I don't, I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, but this is the Physician's Formula Organic Wear Sculpting Bronzer and I actually really do like this. I was just playing around with it. Um, I, I really like this bronzer though. It's super nice. It's very creamy. And what I like about this the most is that it blends out so seamlessly on your skin. Like when I go in and I apply just a little bit of it, it, it looks a little bit harsh at first. Like you can see it's, you know, it looks overwhelming in a sense. But with this, when you go in and you start to blend it into your skin, it just buffs out super, super seamlessly. And I'm really sorry I forgot to use it. I literally looked for this by itself for probably the last 25 minutes before I started filming. And then I forgot to use it. <laughs> That's just the kicker of them all, isn't it? My fault, my apologies, but it is really, really good. Also, I need a makeup wipe because I just smeared schmooey all over my hands. You know what? Am I like, could I maybe, no, you know what, Paige? No. Did I really just wonder, Paige, can you blend this over your powdered face? Guys, <laughs> I think I need to get some fresh air. Wow. I'm also really hot though. Maybe it's just like, cause it's hunk a hunk of burning love hot in here. That's why. Whew. Oh my gosh. When I said that, did anybody else think of um, Uncle Jesse off of Full House? Hunk a hunk of burning love. Anytime I think of anything, Elvis, hips gyrating, anything. I'm like, oh, John Stamos. Oh, love that man. Uncle Jesse was like the American heartthrob of the nineties. I just, oh my God. Oh, those were the days, man. Being a kid, oh, back when it was so good. So good. All right, now for bronzer. <laughs> Y'all just see that shit? I, ca I caught it. Wow, my heart is like racing. Dude, if I wasn't sweating before, I am now. My God. Whew. Anyways, okay, <laughs> let me get back to my life here. So for the bronzer portion, obviously the drugstore, they did have that Physicians Formula One, which I do really like. But on the high-end side, they had this little guy here from Bare Minerals, and this is their Endless Summer Bronzer. I have it in the shade Faux Tan. I'm just gonna apply this with a 202 Flawless Powder Brush from It Cosmetics. And if I recall, yes, this one has a lot of uh, pigment to it, but it does blend out really nicely, so I just wanna be a little bit lighter at first and then I can kind of buff out the excess. I haven't played with this bronzer in a very long time because I became obsessed with the um, the Fenty bronzer. Oh my God, that mm, that's a bronzer. Which again, along those same lines, did any would anybody else look at this and be like, yes, this is the bronzer to end all bronzers. Like it deserves an award. I think it's a good bronzer, yes, but I think that there were so many other ones that were released that I'm like, I don't know, man. Like I, I kind of struggle saying that this one's the best. Because I tell you, that Fenty one, damn, girl, I love that one. Or an hourglass bronzer. You ever tried an hourglass bronzer? Damn, those are good too. Ooh. I want to know which one of these damn products smells like celery because I smell celery. <laughs> Is it my brush? Is it the powder? Dude, I don't know what. Something smells like celery. I smell celery. <laughs> Is this what it's like to have a stroke? I smell toast. Seriously though, I smell celery. It's it's starting to really bother me. Okay guys, so let's have a little a little conversation really quickly. I just realized that apparently I don't know how to read <laughs> because here I was so excited to go into the next portion of this, which obviously is blush, and I was like die hard, like yes, I'm so pumped, I know what I wanna use. Now let me go ahead and start by saying on the drugstore side, um, Glamour.com chose the Maybelline New York Cheek Heat Gel Cream Blushes. Now those are a really good gel cream blush, I'm, I'm nothing against them. But for today, I was really excited because I was like, oh my God, they picked on the other side for the high end, they picked a NARS blush palette. And I was so pumped because this used to be one of my favorites. This is the exposed cheek palette. And I haven't pulled it or used it in quite some time because I used it so much when it came out that I didn't want to overuse it. So I grabbed this, I'm sitting down, I'm like halfway through my spiel. And then it occurred to me, wait a second, that's not the same color that I see on the website that I see right here. And that's because they chose the NARS over lust cheek palette, not 
<laughs> not this one. So for today's video, we're gonna be going in with the exposed cheek palette, even though it's not the right one. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but I can I can tell you and like personally attest to how fantastic this cheek palette is. I think out of all of these, I'm gonna mix these two shades right here. I love this light coral shade and I love it mixed in with this berry tone. So I'm gonna mix both of those with my Morphe E4 just kind of, you know, hit them back and forth, kind of swiggle them around a little bit. I think with these, what I like most about the palette and like the fact that they all share that same consistency, which is really nice. Um, I like that it goes on really easily and the color buffs in, but it's so thin and it's lightweight and it gives you this really beautiful, like almost lightweight kind of healthy glow radiance that doesn't take up any room on your skin. So it doesn't like emphasize any texture or anything. All right, so moving into brows, this is where I'm gonna need a little bit of leniency because I I don't have, well, I do, but I don't um, have the products that they listed because on the high end side, they said that the top brow pencil was the hourglass brow pencil. And I can actually see that because the hourglass brow pencil is really nice. It has a really good consistency. However, I was out of that product, which I just talked about in my ranking hourglass video, which I can link up here. And I talk and I give a lot of details about it in that video. So if you're curious, you can check that out. But for this video, I didn't want to run out and like buy another, you know, 20, 25 or whatever it is, um, eyebrow pencil when I have a ton that I want to use that I need to use. And I just, I don't know, it, it didn't sit right with me. I was like, look, it's not that important. I've talked about it before. And then on the drugstore side, it was kind of the same thing. They have the L'Oreal Paris Unbelieva Brow, which is a um, budge proof brow in a tiny bottle. It's like a, that's what they call it on the website, but it's basically like a tube, like a liquid in a tube. And you can go in and feather it in and it's supposed to stay put. Like it, it doesn't go anywhere for like up to 48 hours or some crazy amount. And this one I do have somewhere. I've used it once. It's nice, but lately how I've been wearing my makeup, which has been more kind of lighthearted, and I've liked a little bit more of a feathery brow, it just wouldn't work. And not to mention, I can't find it anyway. So I'm just going to scrap the brows for this. And really quickly, I'm going to go in with this brow pencil, which is the Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim. I am using this in the shade 260 Deep Brown, which because it's a deeper color, um, I am going to be a little bit more light-handed with it. It so I can have a little bit of a lighter pigmentation. And then I'm also throwing in a little bit of the ABH Dip Brow Gel in dark brown just over top of that just to add to that light little feathering that I like. All right, so moving into eyeshadow, this is actually something I really appreciate about what Glamour.com did with their list because whether it was drugstore or high-end, they actually did not include an eyeshadow palette. Which obviously, you know, for some people, that's not gonna be the favorite, but for me, I really like it because I think year after year after year now, we've seen palettes and palettes and this type and quads and nine pans and oh my God, it's crazy. These are in the shape of a star, you know? And like, we've seen so many different things, but I thought it was cool that in instead of going that traditional route, they actually went for liquid eyeshadows. And on the drugstore side, they went with the L'Oreal Paris Brilliant Eyes Liquid Eyeshadow, which I don't have those, or I do have them, but I think they're put up because I, all my stuff is in bins because I'm cleaning out my room and, and, you know, trying to gut it, which again, you guys will see that here after a while. Um, but instead of going with those, I decided to go with the one that I've talked about so many times that I do really love and that I didn't put away that was right in front of me. And that is none other than the Stila Suede shade liquid eyeshadows. These things are absolutely fantastic. I've talked about them so many times on this channel and we are going to be, like I said, creating a little eye look using those. So I think out of all the shades that I have, the one that I want to really focus on because it's one of my favorites is the shade Busta Mauve, which is a really beautiful deep purple. And I am going, it's like almost where I would say like deep mauve purple meets brown. And I am going to take, this is a Morphe E23. This is my favorite way to work with these. I like to take and just lightly kind of dip off a little off of the applicator, but you can apply it straight to your eye if you prefer, but I like doing it this way just so I can kind of lightly disperse a little bit of the product and then pull it through like so, a little bit right there, and then just kind of buff it out and watch the magic happen. And then just to add a little bit of depth, I'm gonna grab the shade Midnight Espresso, and I'm gonna take that on a BH6 brush. It's still fluffy, but it's a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna take the tiniest amount of that and buff that into the upper outer V, just like I would if they were um, regular powder shadows, just to kind of lightly deepen up the inner and outer just a little bit because I think I'm going to end up taking some highlight and going in the dead center. And then I'm also going to take a little bit of that Midnight Espresso on a Sigma E55 and I am going to pop that 
on my lower lash line, just kind of blend it all the way in. And then on the underside of that color, I'm blending it out a little bit with the shade Sassy, which is like a lighter, kind of mauve pink shade. And I'm just using that to lightly diffuse the lower lash line, make it look a little bit more subdued. And now really quickly, before I go on and move into highlight and a bunch of other explanations, I am going to give my face a little bit of a spray with my Morphe setting spray. Just so you guys know, on their website for high-end or drugstore, they did not have a setting spray listed, so I do have a little bit more leniency in that respect, but if you wanted my personal opinion, I think the affordable option would be a toss-up between the Morphe setting spray and the Catrice Dewy Glow, and on the high-end, I would probably stick with um, the Urban Decay All Nighter, which is a fantastic option, or the ABH Dewy Set Spray. Both of those are really, really good. But now moving on from there, I'm going to need just a little bit more understanding from you guys because I, I I felt like for highlights, I was kind of between a rock and a hard place. So on the high-end side, they had a liquid highlight as the best one, and it was the Dior Backstage Face and Body Glow. Now, I never picked that up. It was something that I wanted, but I never pulled the trigger on it just because, you know, I was loving my ColourPop um, highlight stick, which I think is beautiful, and I never really saw the need to pick that one up. So I never bought that. And then on the drugstore side, they had the Pixi Beauty Plus C Vit Glowy Powder. I don't know what that is. I've never used it. I've seen it before, but it's never been anything that I was attracted to. And I think the odds are that it's too deep for my skin tone just based off of the shade. Um, so I was kind of like, you know, I don't, not only do I not have these, but I don't think that it would be a good fit. So instead for today's video, I decided to go in and choose the best thing I think they have ever created. And that would be the Rachel Loves Pixie palette. For those of you that knew this was coming, I apologize, but I think this palette is just one of the, uh, you know what? I will go out on a limb. I'm gonna say the best thing Pixie has ever done is this palette. I think it is so good. The consistency, the quality, the way it was designed. Um, they did this in collaboration with Rach Loves, and first of all, she is precious. Um, she's my neighbor to the north, Little Miss Up in Canada, and it's just such, such an amazing highlight palette. I absolutely love it, and you can actually do a lot with it, even if it's, you know, for the eyes, for the face, whatever. It's just so, so beautiful. So this is what I'm going in with. Again, I know it's not on the list, but I think it should have been. Like, if you were going to pick something from Pixie that's a highlight, and it's not this, <laughs> I don't think you're choosing correctly. I think you needed help and I think it was right here. So this is what I'm going to use. And I think the first thing I want to do is take the shade Zipper, which is this bright purple right here. It's really, really pretty. And I want to pop that in the center of my eyes really quickly. Just kind of, you know, give it a little boop right up through there. And then in the center of that, I'm going to grab a little bit of the shade Lace, which is like the most blinding, beautiful shade in this palette. And I'm going to pop that right in the center of the purple. And I'm taking that shade all the way up to the brow bone. I took both of them all the way up there just because it helps give the illusion of more lid space. My eyes are larger, you know, the whole, the whole bit. It's all about illusions, of course. And then I'm also popping the shade Lace into my inner corner. And I'm gonna drag that under the tear duct just a little bit as well. And then for my face highlight, I'm gonna grab the e.l.f. Jelly Pop Stipple Brush here. And I'm gonna go in first with the shade Clutch, which is the larger gold shade in this palette because I love to start off with this. God, that is so beautiful. Oh my God. Like, look, oh. I'm gonna hit that Cupid's bow a little bit here. Gonna give us that greasy little chalupa chin we love so much. Yes, honey. Hashtag chalupa chin. Hashtag chalupa chin. Hashtag chalupa chin. Ooh, it's been so long. Oh my God. We haven't talked about that in a while. We haven't talked about my little Dorito Cheeto cupcakes. Yes, honey. Oh, Dorito Cheeto cupcakes. That's why we bronze. For those of you that are new and you don't know, we bronze up the Dorito Cheeto cupcake so that way we can kind of, you know, get rid of it a little bit. We got to bronze it. We got to hide it because that's where we store, you guessed it, our Doritos, our Cheetos, and our cupcakes. Yes, please. And over top of this already blinding moment, we're going to grab a little bit more of the shade Lace up here, which is exquisite. And we're going to take the tiniest amount and just lightly top that highlight. Oh my God. It just sends you to the next level with this thing. I can't even. You know what? I want to hear from you guys. Be honest. How many of you actually went out and you got this palette because I was like diehard obsessed with it and I wouldn't shut up. Be honest. Because I know for a while there I was a little bit annoying, but like honestly, it's arguably one of the best highlights I've ever used in my entire life. Okay. That's how much I stand by it. Whether it's the formula, the shades in here, everything about it. I stand by you. It's so good. I want to hear from you down below. Who went out and got this? Oh my God. Oh my God. So good. Hey, look at that. Like it's moments like this, girl. I can't even be mad that I cheated. Like, how could you be mad? Huh? <sighs> look at that. Huh? <sighs> Mmm, it's so good. And then I'm gonna go in with just a little bit of my Catrice Dewy Glow. I definitely don't need much of that. My skin's looking pretty good, but I wanna add a little bit over my highlight. 
matched. Then moving into mascara, I actually had both of the options. Um, on the high-end side, they had the Thrive Cosmetics Mascara, which this one I wholeheartedly agree with. This is a fantastic, fantastic mascara. It gives you really, really nice length and definition, and it builds really nicely. And I just, I don't have anything bad to say about this. It is really, really nice. And I even pulled it out because I've been using it a lot lately. But I thought for today, I would actually go in with the drugstore option, which is one I've never played with. And that is the Maybelline The Falsies Lash Lift Mascara. Uh, this little guy right here, again, I've obviously never used it. And I thought it would be cool just to test it out. So now to treat this fairly, obviously I am gonna curl my lashes. This is my e.l.f. lash curler. And of course I would get mascara right there. Isn't that just cute? Isn't that just so sweet? Mm. We're gonna leave it there, let it dry, flick it off. Obviously I know what to do, but oh, it's just so annoying. For those of you that are newer to my channel, I do typically go in with like two to three-ish coats depending on how it looks. All right, so can we just talk about this like open and honest for a second? I feel like everybody always says, yeah, go ahead and scrape away the old mascara and like everything's great, but it never is. In every single instance of me trying this hack, yes, it does remove the mascara, but it always removes a chunk of your foundation. No one ever talks about that. No one ever talks about the unsightly little that it leaves behind of like, oh, there used to be makeup here. Nobody talks about that rude. Now for me, I'm really lucky because of where that's at, you won't really be able to tell, but I'm going to grab some of my Revlon Color Stay Powder in Transparent. This is what I use to brighten up my under eye, and I'm going to really lightly just kind of buff a little bit of this powder into my under eye. You can still see it right there, but as all of my makeup kind of melds together throughout the day, it'll eventually dissipate and everything will kind of level out. But honestly, who's going to be close enough to even tell that? Nobody. Nobody, really. Honestly. And if you're that close, back up. Girl, I don't need you that close. Six feet. You're not social distancing if you're that close. Back up. All right, and then obviously with all of that done, it leads us into the final step, which is lips. And on the high-end side, they had a couple of different options. They have the uh, Armani Beauty Natural Matte Liquid Lipstick, which obviously I don't have have those. I don't really wear liquid lipsticks a ton lately, so I decided to stick to the drugstore side of things, which they had two different items. They have the Chapstick Total Hydration Moisture and Tinted Lip Balm, which is really nice. I have tried it. It's really good. The color is really pretty, or, which is what I'm using today, the ColourPop Just to Tint Lip Crayons. Now, these I have used before, but for some reason, I could only find one shade, and it is the shade, hello, give me some more. Okay, this could work. Oh, yes. Look at that. That's a good, that's a good, that can work. Okay, we can do this. Before we do, though, we got to get all these crusties off. Oh, my God. I don't know what is happening to me lately, but, girl, my lips are just, like, perma-dry. Ugh. These do have a smell to them. I'm not sure what it is. It's almost like... I don't know. It's kind of stinky. It smells like, a little bit like feet. What's that smell? <laughs> What's that smell? I don't know what that is, but it, it smells kind of funky. And all right, you guys, that completes this full face. What do you think? I'm gonna go ahead and throw up an up close right now, just so you can see how everything is coming together. Um, I personally actually think everything came together really nicely on my skin. I'm not having any real issues other than I would say a slight amount of oxidizing, maybe a little bit of um, settling into like the fine lines around my mouth. But aside from that, my skin actually does look really nice, even with the Pat McGrath foundation. So maybe there is something to the combination of these products and how well they work together. I don't know. You guys can tell me what you think down below. I also want to know if you agree with them. I'm going to leave them linked down below. Do you think that the items that they had on these lists like properly represent some of the better items? Do you totally disagree? Do you think it's like a bought and paid for kind of thing? What do you guys think? Leave me your thoughts and opinions down below. Again, whether it's how it turned out, the list themselves, do you like these kind of videos, so on and so forth, leave it down there. Personally, really love these kind of videos. I hope that they become like a thing that people do because honestly, it's good to sit down with makeup that you already have or makeup you've forgotten about and test it out. Test it out, you know, now that times have changed, maybe you have different technique, maybe you apply differently, maybe, I, I don't know, like, think, I feel like things and preferences, they just change so much that videos like these can be really helpful, whether it's to someone like me to discover, you know, makeup that I loved or I forgot about or whatever. For it's for people like you guys at home to be encouraged to shop your stash and to look up articles and maybe learn new stuff. I don't know. I just, I like these kind of videos. I hope that, I, I hope you guys like them because I really do. Let me know down below. Um, again, what you guys think. If you haven't checked me out yet on Instagram and on Twitter, like I've said a hundred times, I will link them in the description. I am super, super active over on Instagram right now, whether it's posting on my feed or hanging out with you guys, you know, day to day in my Insta stories, just trying to keep everyone as entertained as possible as we're all going through the, whatever the hell's going on right now. Um, I'm just, I'm just trying to be here for you guys. So check me out in both of those places. And of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, please be sure to do that as well. I do upload three new videos a week.
week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and they go up bright and early between 6 and 7 a.m. my time here in good old northern Michigan. But you guys, that is it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. Please don't forget to have a great day, night, weekend, whatever it is when you're watching this, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Wow, that, uh, that spot right there is definitely large and in charge, isn't she? That's looking really cute. <laughs> Mascara. Welcome back. So in today's video, we are going to be going into Glamour.com. But on the high-end side, the thing that really... Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, hi, hello. And if you've been here before, well then, you're great. And hello, beautiful people. <laughs> Oh God. On the drugstore side, they picked the Maybelline New York Cheek Cheat. <laughs> it was just me ripping my leg skin off of my chair.